Hello there, and welcome to Women's Business. My name is Dr. Marianne Schalkos Smith, known to most as Dr. Daycare, and this is my co host, Amy Vogel. We'd like to welcome you to our mentoring program designed to educate our community on issues facing working women. We will be speaking to our guests in the areas of art, sciences, health, education, law, medicine, politics, community service, military, and business. The goal of the show is to provide information that comes only from personal experience and to pass this information down to our daughters, nieces, neighbors, family, and friends. Much of the content will relate to the guest speaker's journey in their profession, what they have learned most about this process, and what they wished they had known before this journey began. Since women-owned businesses are the fastest growing sector of our economy, my guests will close with what lesson they would like to pass on to the viewing audience. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on Women's Business. We are honored to welcome Sherry Mercurio from Mercurio Group Real Estate. Yes. Is that right, Sherry? Perfect. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. So how did you get into the real estate business? Because it's a great time to be in it today. Wow. You're not kidding. It truly is. So, good talk timing. About, um, talk about a really just a good dream, to be honest with you. I grew up in the business, and my parents were into real estate, and they still are to this day. So I've been pretty fortunate for the past, well, I'm 40, so... I was 12, 13 years old, answering the phone at my mom's real estate office and just being able to grow up in the business. I just be, had this passion for people and I thought, you know what, when I was a kid, I just, I knew where I was going. That's exactly. amazing. So yeah. what do you, I'm going to go into this family business for one moment here. Yeah. What did your father and mother think about you, second generation of family business? It's wild. They yes. love it. They love it. And yeah. what's nice I get is that. I decided to open my office in Pawtucket and I grew up in Pawtucket and that's where I learned the business. So it was nice to, like I said, my mom and dad are still in the business, so it was nice to keep our roots there, all mm -hmm. of my family is there, and that's where I've learned. So to be able to open up and bring it back there, mm -hmm. it was it was wild for them. And they love to see my success because they can drive by my office every day. And that's great. Yeah. For them, it's great, yeah. And you probably so, have a huge network there as well. Well, exa community. exactly, all the people that, it, it's funny because my mom and dad, people that I've answered the phones with or met when I was eight, nine years old that came to my mom mm -hmm. and dad's house, those are the people that I'm dealing with today that are still in the business. So to see them and to see me, they're like, wow, so many years later, you're mm -hmm. still around and good for you to follow mom and dad's footsteps. So, so kind of a little bit of repeat business that continues to go on and on and yes, on. Yes, yes. It's generations. A, yes, I love it. So let me picture your dinner table when you were a kid. It was uh, all about business, family all the time. business. Can you yeah. relate to that, Amy? Yes. <laughs> Same thing, really. Yeah, Amy so and I have mother, mother daughter. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. That's right. Threw it in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love. Yeah. Well, it's the best way to, to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I've, I've First been. Firsthand. Yeah. Like, so, people, everyone asks me, how do you know so much about this mm -hmm. and that? Because you indirectly learn mm -hmm. from your mom and things mm -hmm. that, as a kid, you were like, ah, I can't believe they're making me answer the phone. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> personalize at such a young age. And that was my chore. And if you didn't answer it, you yeah. were in trouble. But. Yeah. That's what makes me successful today is because it was instilled mm -hmm. in yeah. us at such a young age. Yeah. yeah. Aim picked up a lot of the business, too, of a child care business. And it amazes me because <clears throat> she went off to college and studied business and economics and stuff. And she has an eight-year-old daughter. And child development, she's like so on target. I'm like, you pick that up too. Wow. Yeah, you know, right. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. What you don't realize the outcome of what your children are picking up in the home every day. Of it's course. Cool. And as a mom, you must be so proud to be able mm -hmm. to see that. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's so tangible. And yeah. it's something that you, you know, yeah. most most kids don't have what we have. So yeah. Yeah. we're very fortunate. Mm -hmm. And I do recognize my successes based a lot on, on that. Wow. I definitely learned how to be a good employee at the dinner table. <laughs> yeah. so you hear all the stories of the employees that showed up late or didn't call in, and then I was like, ooh, don't do that. It makes people really upset. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Not good for the mashed like, potatoes. Oh, okay. That were instant mashed potatoes. Like, oh, God, I had to go in early today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and even, for, you know, silly things, yeah. and, and you might not realize it, is 
even at nine, ten years old, is I had to write down a proper message. When somebody called, you had to make sure you took their name and their phone number mm -hmm. and, and you could understand what we wrote down because that was that's worth dollars. Yeah. And you know, and it's hard to get that business. So it's little things like you said, cool. as yeah. a mom you might not realize you instilled in us, but yeah. we definitely yeah. picked something oh, yeah. up from yeah. 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 <laughs> definitely. So what was your favorite subject at school? Like what got you into the business world here? Oh wow, school. I was terrible. Absolutely the worst student ever, I can say. Um, I am a hands-on person. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I got I got kicked out of just about every class. I love that question. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> Look where you are today. L right. I think it's funny. Um, I honestly got kicked out of classes for laughing, and um, I always went to the the principal's mm -hmm. office and says, "Roy, you're back again. Yeah, I'm back. What'd you do now? I was laughing." <laughs> and um, I I think I don't know if it was a defense mechanism yeah. for years or I don't know. I still do it today. And um, my grandmother used to kick me out of her house for laughing. I used to get kicked out of church for laughing, and, and I still do it. And I don't know if I just, you know. You're just happy. Yeah, I, I am, and I'm genuinely just, I, I think smiling is contagious, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it is, but I didn't, I didn't have any good subjects in school. I was the worst student ever. The worst student. <laughs> worst. But Music. You're very, but you're very successful today. Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, I was good at band. You know, I, I play instruments, and I sing, and I have oh. a background in theater and music. and. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. I think that's probably what makes me successful is a little bit of all that combined Absolutely. with the experience because like I said, I'm, I'm more hands-on. I'm not a book smart person by any stretch. Yeah, and I think like today they have all the charter schools that yes. focus on yeah. music, even some public schools, but non-traditional learning, which I think if it was back in the 80s and 90s, Right. So many students would have had the opportunity to get into what they wanted at a younger age. Yeah, well, you know, we did have some schools, but we, oddly enough, it was frowned upon to actually go to one of those schools for music or... Yeah, it's like you stay the course within the system yeah. of whatever it was you were staying the course with. Exactly, and I attempted college for a few years for music, and um, I got into music theory, and just the thought of sitting there reading and understanding, like, just yeah. gives me anxiety now <laughs> thinking about it. It's yeah. just... It's not me. I, I like talking to people. I like yeah, people, the face-to-face -face yeah, interaction. I only met you five minutes ago. But <laughs> definitely a people person. Yeah, which is fantastic. I just, I'm a ball of energy, yeah. and I don't know where it comes from. I That's really good. don't. Take it, take it. Thank you. Know, you. It keeps Beautiful. you going, though. And yeah, it it does. makes you successful. Yes. Well, it does. It's, it's good but bad. You know, you have to try to find always find that balance with mm -hmm. family and work. And I don't yet have that balance. I'm still working on that. Oh my God. But you know, you're always trying to build your business, and yeah. Mm -hmm. and At the end of the day, of all the shows I've been doing since, since 2004, I have a little notebook, and it's like I take pick up mostly we had one man in all the years we've been doing this <coughs> and for all the women that pass here I take one idea on how they balance it I don't know if anyone's uh. got that formula it's a hard formula yeah. especially when you've got family <coughs> and relatives and all kinds of activities and you know certainly families are foremost of the whole thing but the background you're doing this for your family you know but I don't know how people balance it sometimes you just wake up and see what the day is going to look like and sometimes you just pray for that snowstorm like I <laughs> <laughs> completely for the day off right a um, balanced snowstorm <laughs> yeah you know I find it very difficult recently yeah. in the past year I took on some professional business coaching and oh, wow. I love it because it's just people from around the world yes. you know it's not just here in Rhode Island which I like and they're clearly successful in what they do and I think it's a mindset you know I really do think it's a mindset is that they they wake up early they stay late, they do what they have to do, and when they say, you know, this is what I'm gonna get done today, they get it done, get it done. because they know that the next two hours are family time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they value that and they enjoy that, and mm -hmm. I think you have to just yep. get up and do the work and create that, you know, urgency every day to get it done mm -hmm. in that time frame. And if your mindset is, that's my family time, that's it, that's yeah. your family mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. You draw the What's line in the sand. What's one question that you get asked a lot as a, as a coach? Is it a kind of universal question that you get asked? Um, no, to be honest with you, okay. I mean, everybody in our business, I think anybody in sales yeah. always has that struggle of just the up and down, how to be yeah. consistent, mm -hmm. like we said, time management, you know, how to say no to clients, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you're making money, like, how do you say, no, yeah, I can't, yeah. I'm going to go spend time with somebody else, you know, yeah. so it's difficult. Um, I think every day is a learning experience in our business. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think almost no. any businesses, yes. Completely. So when your parents ori originally opened up the real estate practice, I'm sure well, there's no t not technology like there is today. No. <laughs> so I feel like we're always connected today. Yeah. So you can't walk away. They always people expect like constant, constant communication, 
instantaneous communication? How do you think that's changed the real estate industry? Oh God, drastically, drastically. <laughs> Well, first and foremost, it made it very expensive to be into oh, real estate. You know, okay. people think this is just a quick money business. It's not by any sort I of I did until you just told me that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Of course, because, you know, understand that the Internet is available 24 mm -hmm. hours a yeah. day. So people expect us to be available, available 24 hours a day. And the problem with somebody like me or somebody with that high energy is when people want to work with you, they only want to work with me. Yes. So because of that, you know, real estate people now have to have teams and they mm -hmm. have to have people in place literally 24 seven, just like most business owners, because you never know what shifts people are yep. working when they're mm -hmm. on the internet, when they want information. So you have to have support staff to support all of those yeah. people 24 seven to get back to people that are working third shift, second yeah. shift, because normally you showed houses after, you know, Five o'clock, six yeah. o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Now, because it's on the internet, people can see this stuff throughout yeah. the night. They're at work, they're clicking. Yep. So, usually when they click, like these buyers have seen all of the houses before we even see them nowadays yeah. because that's what they do at work. Yeah. Yes. They can do it on their phones, their yeah. tablets, anywhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they can see the, f the full picture of the houses nowadays. Amazing. So, years ago in my mom's age you mm -hmm. know they had books that were like as big as a yes. phone book they were black and white and it was fantastic that somebody had to come to your house yes. make that relationship exactly enjoy mm -hmm. a cup of coffee with you get yep. to know your family get to know who you are as a person and really have that relationship now you don't have that anymore because people are just so uh, quick they yeah, see it yeah. they see the pictures of the house they see you on the internet and then you're done, done. yep you know, so they're every, moving on to the next one just as quick as they clicked on you. Completely. It's amazing. And, and the unfortunate t part, too, is there's so many people trying to always capitalize on the business. How can they make the quick buck? So th there's a big misunderstanding in the business that when people click that button, they think they're talking to somebody else on the other line where it could be a listing agent or something else. They don't realize there's all these third party vendors yeah. now that were never around, now, really? you know, back in the day. Um. So it's um, it's tough. It's a it's always a fight. It's a fighting business. I had a business breakfast this morning with a good friend and colleague and a mutual friend of ours are selling her a house on um, the Cape Cod. And it was interesting. She just pulled out her phone and showed me the whole house. I'm yep. like, wow, I'm yeah. here. I am sitting here on Lincoln, Rhode Island, look at someone's house in Cape Cod. It blows your mind. Yeah. Well, that makes it more difficult. Like yeah. even, even HGTV and all these other talk shows is they make it look easy to flip yeah. a house. Oh. Yeah. Like in a week, you have a mansion. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> right. I'm like, wow, why can't I get my kitchen done in like two of months? Of course. And, and, and I flip houses, and I can assure you that's not how real life is. You know, no. it's a yeah. lot of hard work, and, and they don't happen in a week. And, um, you know, buyers, like I said, they're just so quick. They can see the, every angle of the house now mm -hmm. that if there's one thing that they don't like, they don't want to see the house. So they wow. discount the entire thing. So. Me flipping houses, knowing a lot about them, I could take you to a house that you might not necessarily love everything about, but once I get you into it, I could say, listen, let's change this, change that, whatever. Yeah. But if you see that house on the internet now, it. you're not going. Mm -mm. Amazing. I think, so, and then I lose the opportunity to see to you face to face. And lose a yes. relationship. Right, because you're just on to the next person yeah. so quickly because you're just clicking so quick, you don't even understand the process yeah. anymore or what my roles and responsibilities yeah. are to represent you. And I think first-time buyers are much different than second, third-time buyers. Oh, yeah. So as a first-time, everyone's a first-time buyer once, right, if you yeah. choose to buy. And I remember I wanted, like, the perfect setup, the perfect house, and I had it in my mind. Oh, yeah. Within a year of being in that house, I didn't want to be in it anymore. It was not the right house for me at all. Yeah. So my husband and I went for our second house, and all I cared about was a fenced-in backyard <laughs> and a walk-out kitchen to the backyard and one, one level of it. Everything else, I was like, you can change. Yep, priorities change, yeah, you, completely. And my real estate agent was like, you're so much easier now. Yeah. <laughs> and I love this house because we did what we needed to do inside, Yeah. but you can't restructure Well, you could, but that would cost a lot of money to, like, level a house and start again. Right. But the fenced-in backyard, walk-out backyard is exactly what I wanted, and everything else was livable yeah and I love my house now and, and you're you're interesting because that's always a catch-22 because mm -hmm. typically people that are buying their second house they know exactly what they want yeah. you know so you were willing to give up some things where other people bought their first house they gave gave up their second one they know they're living there forever it's their dream home like they're getting exactly what they want yeah mm -hmm. so it's it's just an interesting market you yeah. know years ago also they didn't have all these different loan products that they have nowadays yeah. too and one thing I'm thankful for HGTV is it does teach these first-time home buyers that 
you can go in and fix up a house and you can get the money from the bank that yep. will allow you to fix up the house while you're living in it where years ago they didn't allow those yep. things mm -hmm. you know you just got your mortgage and that was it yeah so if you need to put any more money into your home you better you hopefully had in savings exactly or go on credit card debt exactly that's it <laughs> yeah so now you know you tell people listen if you find the perfect house perfect location it meets your size it meets everything that you need then get the extra money mm -hmm. from the bank and just put the sweat equity in because it's the sweat equity that I love that you know so. Because I know that you're going to be able to capitalize that in, in the future. And that's what's going to bring you and your family to your dream home, is to capitalize on your first purchase, mm -hmm. put some sweat equity into it. Don't buy the house with the granite that's already done. You know, do yeah. a little hard work yeah. yourself. Capital, capitalize in five to seven years and then buy the dream house. Mm -hmm. With all your expertise, I'm curious to know, so I'm learning you're just speaking here. Um, Bank, credit union, I, I stay away from mortgage companies after 2008, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are they really kind of on the rise again? What's the best place to go for a mortgage? Ooh, that's an interesting question, mm. especially if I'm going to get busted on TV. Okay, <laughs> let's keep it simple. Yeah, you know, I, I, I wonder, you know what I mean? It's like people ask me, I'm like, uh, you know. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's kind of it, changed a lot. It is. In the last and 10 years. When it really I, has. I've been in business for 15 years now, and it's the same market now as I was 15 years ago. So yeah. you're starting to find all these weird companies popping mm -hmm. up again. Yes, and again. Yes. Yeah, you know, I'm not a fan of um, anything that has a 1 800 number that's not based in Rhode Island. If I can't t tangibly walk into your office and talk to your underwriter when I have a problem, Thank you. I want no part of that. Quicken loans, any of those things, I want no part of. Thank you. Um, because there's too many newer agents out there, there's too many newer mortgage companies out there out there that for us experienced agents when we have a problem when I call the attorney I'm talking to the attorney I'm yeah. not talking to the people behind the scenes I need to get to what a, the bottom line and the newer agents or the newer guys don't understand this I mean we have guidelines as well yeah. so for me I like local places Navigant Credit Union is one of my biggest that I love love them I mean they're wonderful. The president they are wonderful. is wonderful. Yes, they are. They do a lot with the community. They're very communi community very oriented. Community. Yes. They're very Rhode Island, like true Rhode Island. Yeah. Tried. Yes. They're a lot of them are Rotarians. I'm in the yeah. Rotary Club, and I Rotary. Yeah. Yes, oh, yes. That's how we know each other from the Rotary. I'll tell you, just I retired July for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love my Rotary. Seven thirty meeting in the morning was a little early for me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like oh my gosh, what time do we meet? Right? Yeah, ours is lunch, so it's not yeah, that bad. Yeah, ours is Yeah, yeah. Pawtucket Credit Union is great. So stay local is what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No yeah. one eight hundred numbers. I, I truly feel safe with you saying that. You know. Yeah, and it's and even just somebody that you've had experience with. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I hear this all. This is so disturbing to me. Is I'm a fan of new agents. I love education. I love teaching people. Mm -hmm. I believe in education. Um, but it scares me when I say to people, like, oh, I know you're going to sell your house. And they say, yeah, but I'm waiting for, you know, Cousin Tom. He's getting his license next week. Yeah. Oh, like that yeah. just scares me. I mean, this yeah. is the biggest purchase or sale of yeah. your life mm -hmm. that you really need somebody that knows what they're doing. So tying back in with the mortgage originator is if this is their first loan, it's probably not the person that you want to use. I mean, practice mm -hmm. something on somebody, somebody else, yeah. Yeah. not the biggest purchase of mm -hmm. your life, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I have been in business 15 years and I recommend the people to me because they've been in business 15 years or we've been doing business yeah. together, I know we have a past yeah. that we can get problems resolved quickly versus dialing a number and I'm just getting a voicemail. Mm -hmm. Now in your family, you have uh, siblings who went into this field too? Or? Yeah, oh, my really? sister is an uh, successful okay. appraiser. Cool. Yes. Wow, yes, you guys yes. get the whole circle. We do. Do you have a bank or two? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get there. That, that's my goal is to expand. And a lawyer. And yes, exactly. That would be wild. Um, my aunt owns uh, an agency in Coventry as well. Oh, All nice. of my cousins are in the business. Oh, wow. Oh, what a nice it's, network. Yeah, great you're not network. kidding. It's been yeah. great. Um, it's been great for education. The bad thing is I could, when I started business, I could never rely on my family yeah. you know, to say, hey, give me some referrals because usually the first referral is like your mom, your yeah, dad, yeah. your sister. Yeah. But for me, as you can never do that. So I started ground up. But it's been great, and yeah. I'm happy that everyone in my family in real estate has been mm -hmm. successful. Yeah. So right now it's a uh, seller's market. Yeah, so extremely. You need more inventory to get buyers the, what they want. Yeah. So when the market's not doing as well, how do you maintain that so peop income wise? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So after like 2008, 2009, 2010, it was kind of like a scarier time for, I'm sure, real estate agents. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, I always keep smiling. My yeah. aunt taught me this years ago that this is truly a numbers game, mm -hmm. and I've learned that it, it really is. I mean, as long as, like we said before, you remain consistent at all times. So I call a minimum of 10 people a day, oh. five days a week, you know, so it's 50 people a, a week, 
at, at a minimum. I'm constantly giving out gifts. I stay in touch with my past clients. So I have a database of people that I keep in touch with all the time. Yeah. But people always have to buy. People mm -hmm. always have to sell. Mm -hmm. People are getting divorced. You know, people pass away. So no matter what the interest rates are, if people are losing their houses, yep. the market is what it is. And I'm in that 10%, the top 10% where I'm going to be there. Yep. I will always be there because I'm always, you ha just have to be consistent and it's a numbers game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You stay in the game, you keep focused, you keep calling your people, you'll get referral business and How do you reach out to past clients? How do you do that? Um, I have newsletter a, or? <clears throat> I have a couple of different ways. I mean, I send out handwritten letters. I send out a minimum of 10 thank you cards a week just to say, hey, I'm out here. Thanks for the conversation. I appreciate mm -hmm. it because I do. I am that yep. interactive person. I make the past phone calls. I do client testimonial parties. I do client appreciation parties. Oh, that's great. Oh, wow. I mean, I keep engaged with my people, but that's my theater background. Yeah. You know, so for me, it's, it's just a good background. Really. Yeah. Carry it, it right through. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of created a nice little system for me, and that's why people keep coming back for more because I'm honest. I'm out there. Mm -hmm. I just put myself out there and. Say, do you, say now, me. what do you think the success rate is of real estate agents? Do you feel like right now there might be a boom of them coming into the market? Yeah. And how, what do you think the percentage is that will stay? No, not a lot. That's really? yeah. I think yeah. that's what I've seen a lot. Is like, <clears throat> let's say a hundred come in, only maybe thirty will survive if they can get through the next downward thing. Yeah, and you know, honestly, I'd be surprised if even that many okay. survived. I mean, yeah. it's it's a doggy dog world out there. Mm -hmm. It's a tough, tough business. But like I said, it's expensive. I, mean, I don't know what makes people think that they're just gonna sell gonna, and make a commission. Yeah, because <laughs> it's not like that. I mean, these you have to put money into a mm -hmm. business to get money out of mm -hmm. a business. And Correct. the first thing I say is, great, you got your real estate license. Okay, well, how are you gonna run your business? Right. Because that's essentially what it is. And right. the feedback that I'm getting lately from the the newer generation is wild. Like, they think that they're gonna join a company and they're just gonna get handed leads or somebody's gonna pay for their marketing and stuff like that. And that's not how it is. If it's truly doggy dog you are an independent contractor you're out there on your own mm -hmm. so you better have a good business plan and you better have some money in the bank to keep mm -hmm. it going <laughs> yeah. i just got to share this as a grandmother of five to hear you guys talk about the new generation coming up makes me feel really good, <laughs> <laughs> good for you. doesn't it like oh my god I used, to, I used to say that now you all say that there is a difference isn't there oh it's, it's thank you for sharing and yeah and they'll be saying that in another 20 30 years too it's amazing it's just the way life just changes and I never thought I would see this, and I'm 40. <laughs> I heard you say that same as <laughs> you know, And I'm thinking I'm still kind of younger in the business. You are. But yeah, I don't know, maybe. I'm, mm. I'm, I thought 40 was young, maybe it's not. It anymore. is, it is. But um, you know, some of the, the agents I interview, like the mindsets are just so far off. It's yeah. just unfortunate. Mm -hmm. This is not a get quick rich scheme. This is yeah. not, mm -hmm. we're going to make a lot of money overnight. This is a, you just bought yourself a business. Mm -hmm. And you better learn how to run, run it really it. quickly, run you know. And I'm sure some of them <coughs> are making you now again because of, of the course. market. But it's two years from now. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like life isn't about one year at a time. Right. Life is about long term yeah. getting to retirement, right? Well, Absolutely. To, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. And just like any business, I mean, you have to market yourself every mm -hmm. day. You have to make those new connections yes. every day. Like my job as a as an owner is to prospect every single mm -hmm. day. You can't to keep stop. yourself. Oh. In the front of everybody. Absolutely, yeah. because of course you have things going right now and there's things on the hopper, but you know, transactions fall apart, houses come mm -hmm. back on the market, and for somebody to have a steady income, yeah. you have to focus yeah. every day. Like, I have a strict schedule. It's not I, just going to come to you. No. You need no. to be out there getting what you need to get. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so for some reason, a lot of people do think that, oh, look, hey, I got my license and yeah. I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah. No. And when somebody has that plan, I'd like to know it. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll travel the I know, world. I'm going to try it, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We truly get it. You over, truly get overnight it. Overnight millionaire. <laughs> yeah, not that easy. We have five was. minutes to go. A quick question. Yeah. Is open houses gone, or are they still happening? Uh oh, man. I have open, to know that. Open houses, to me. In case me, someone asked me, I know what to say. Yeah, no, I, I, I love them. Um, yeah. Sellers Is it worth the whole day Sunday doing that, though? Well, here's, here's the thing. With people, the internet? People either love or hate my answer, and I okay. am very transparent. I, I like to have open houses no more than an hour and a half. There's no need. Yeah, to extend it. Right. Nice. You know, people are like, what do you mean? How come you're not having it for four hours? Show up and up. Do you want to sit at an open house for four hours on a Sunday? No. Because if my house, if I had the house open house for five hours, everybody would come in that last hour. If yeah. I have it for one hour, you'll come at that, at that hour. hour. So I have this one friend I quickly. Like He's so funny. He says, you know what? That's it. I'm the home of the 15-minute open house. 
because he knows if for 15 minutes, if he had it open, people will show up yes. within those 15 minutes. And then you get competition. If it, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's wow. the thing. And yes, well, you want and people like looking at closets like, ooh, and then the other person's going to be like, what if they take my house that's not even theirs yet? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so the name of the game now is, you know, it's a, it's a hot, hot market. Put the house on the market, ready to sell, ready to rock and roll. Do an open house. Get everybody there mm -hmm. all at once because you know you're going to get multiple offers. Okay. So there's only one of me to go around. So right. we do one open house typically so for an open hour, open house hour is still on, on the market. Absolutely. Do. I think I it's hot, hot, hot. The best way to do it. And it's Especially for this market. Of like, course. People get like, they, they, they possess get the house that they yes. don't even own. Of. Yes, <laughs> it's, <amazing>. it's fantastic. <laughs> and it's a great way for the listing agent uh -huh. to get in front of all those groups of people mm -hmm. as Got well it. and potentially try to sell themselves to somebody else. So Got never it. cut themselves short. Got it. Yeah. So you certainly understand business. Your energy is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who got you? Who's your mentor when you were a kid? You have like an aunt or a relative? Got a few minutes left. My grandmother. Grandmother. Is, and she probably doesn't know it. Aww. It's Mimi Doris. She's still alive and kicking. She's so she's going to watch this. Yeah, this I hope great. so. She's funny, funny, funny. Jenny. And, um, you know, she's just a good egg. She was always she was always in business. Mm -hmm. She owned um, a ceramic store. No, she owned a um, yeah, ceramic store. She owned a fish and chip company. Ooh, and she also chips. owned a florist. Aww. So. Oh my God! Yes, wow. all in Pawtucket. All wow. in Pawtucket. Wow. Yes. Wow, that's beautiful. So talk about growing up in so many different businesses. Though I mean, she grew up in a convent in um, Canada. Oh wow! So she has instilled so many things oh, in me yeah. that I, you know, I'm so thankful for. Simple things, just how to put a napkin on your lap and mm -hmm. how to, you know, hold utens utensils properly mm -hmm. and things that most people my age should know but don't know. And yeah. I'm thankful to Mamie for that. Yeah. Yeah. She's a good this actress. So we have after school programs run all year, then full time in the summer. One thing I thought of is we should actually do a whole lesson for one week next year in camp on where your silverware belongs, yes. what to drink from, and where the napkin belongs. Meme would come in and do it. Meme we have Meme. Would be so I'm going to tell Ari and I'm going to tell Alicia yes. we have someone who come in and teach Meme the from children. Canada. She loves the kids. You know, she's so funny too. She still goes, she drives to the casino all the time. She goes That's back great. and forth. Yeah, she still works. That's great. Yep. She goes on cruises all the time. So she's still going. I like she's, this yeah, meme. I'd love yeah, to meet she's, her. She's funny. She's That's wild. Cool. She's where I get my energy from. That's she's awesome. She's, she's a, living life. Oh, she is, she's and she life. loves it to That's the great. fullest. It's and important to live life. She even has a Facebook account. That's I how I that. keep up on her. So <laughs> I have to, yeah. You're like, Meme, you do more fun things than I do. <laughs> she does. She does. <laughs> so she's a good egg, egg and she'd love to come Aww. in and, and help you with that. But... Yeah, she's been the best mentor I've ever had, and she doesn't know it, and I think that's the best Aww, thing. Oh, well, you've oh, now said great. it, so yeah. hopefully she'll see this segment of uh, If we put Island. it on Facebook so she can see yeah. it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Mem, you know, Mem's a convent lady, so she doesn't, like, she's not one to say I love you. So over the course of the years, yeah. I try to break her down. I'm like, come on, Mem, I know you can say it, you know, and she tries to be that tough cookie, and that's where I get the work ethic from, but does we're breaking her down. Does she say to you, you feel it? I don't need to say the words. She does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we got I had a relative like that. I yeah. don't need to say the words. You can feel it. Yeah, yeah. She always said, Dad, like, I want to hear those words. Yeah. You know Mamie loves you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I do. She's proud of yeah. all of us. That's, That's a beautiful wonderful. woman. Yeah. Thank you for giving her tribute. That was yeah. really cool. Thanks. Really nice. Nice. Well, thank you for being on our show today. Thank you for you having me. You were high energy. <laughs> yeah, So sure much right. information. <laughs> thank so you. So I think it was very good for the listening audience. So we appreciate it. Awesome. Thank Any you guys for having me. You want to put out there before? Uh, you know what I, I was saying this this morning, yeah. you never fully dress without a smile, it's so true, there smiling is contagious, you know, it clearly works, just makes the world a better place, it I really does, it's simple and it's free. Yeah. It's free. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry.